What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Dolphins in Depth Podcast. I'm Daniel Yafisi. That is David Neal. Thanks so much for tuning in. A uh, quick reminder before we start, make sure to subscribe to, uh, to the Miami Hero YouTube page. Um, like, share, comment. Make sure to subscribe to the Miami Herald as well so you can get your latest news on everything happening in South Florida. So as you can see, I am not in South Florida. I am not in Miami where I usually record. I am on the West Coast in California where uh, the Dolphins are staying out to prepare for their next game, a Sunday night primetime nationally televised game against the Chargers. This game follows the Dolphins, a rare loss for the Dolphins. That five-game winning streak was snapped in half by the 49ers. Mike McDaniels returns to San Francisco as well as uh, several other uh, Dolphins players and coaches. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't the return, uh, the reunion that many had hoped for in Miami. Uh, the Dolphins losing 33-17 to to the 49ers. Um, again, that five-game winning streak snapped. Um, struggles for the offense really was the uh, the story of this game. You know, we had seen Tua in this offense really take off since his return from a concussion in Week Seven. Uh, but last Sunday, it was a it, it was a slog. It was a struggle. It was a uh, um, just a lot of issues, a lot of misfires from Tua in that offense. Um, Three hundred eight total yards for the for the unit, um, the lowest since Week One over seven on third downs. I mean, we're used to see seeing Tua just go crazy on third down, but they couldn't convert a single uh, a single opportunity there. Um, the ground game, I mean, this was the number one defense in the 49ers, and they definitely lived up to it. The ground game, not existing, just 33 yards. I mean, really, maybe the most uncharacteristic thing we saw from Tua was uh, three turnovers and two interceptions, back-to-back interceptions. Tua had gone 193 straight passes without uh, throwing an interception. Obviously, we saw him throw two back-to-back picks there. And that all just led to a very, very frustrating afternoon for the Dolphins, especially when you take into account that Jimmy Garoppolo, the 49ers starting quarterback, uh, was knocked out of that game on the first drive with a broken foot that's going to sideline him for several weeks. Uh, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, last pick in the 2022 NFL draft came in, and he looked good, uh, kind of carving up that Dolphins defense uh, at, at points in, in that game. Um, but overall, just a very frustrating afternoon for the Dolphins. But um, as they said, you know, they, they want to learn from this opportunity. Um, Mike McDaniel said he wanted his team to soak in a playoff type of atmosphere and learn from it with everything on the line. And as I said before, uh, in about four days, the Dolphins are going to be right back in the spotlight with that Sunday night game at SoFi Stadium uh, to a, Justin Herbert, Dolphins, Chargers. It's going to be a fun one. Um, But obviously, we're going to start with that 49ers game. Um, It was an interesting one because I think that a lot of people who are very skeptical um, about Tua, about this offense, this was their gotcha moment. It was uh, the 49ers laid down the blueprint. Did they expose Tua? Is the uh, five-game winning streak, was it all a mirage, a fraud? Um, and, And I left that game thinking that as much as the 49ers defense really, really made uh, things tough for um, a Dolphins offense that was, as we know, playing without Teron Armstead, playing without Austin Jackson. You have a pair of backup um, tackles in there. Um, you know, the linebackers are secondary. They were really on point after that opening score, uh, 75-yard touchdown um, to Trent Sherfield. After that, they were really, really locked down. Um, but as much as the 49ers defense played well, when you rewatch that game and even in the moment, you saw a lot of, again, as I said before, uncharacteristic play from Tua Tungvaluwa. I mean, this is a guy who is, you know, amongst the top in the NFL in terms of accuracy on target percentage. I mean, he seemed kind of rattled. I mean, honestly, he seemed kind of rattled in the face of that pass rush. Um, it seemed like, I mean, I I know he he didn't admit it. He wouldn't say to it. But to my, you know, just me watching from the press box up high, it seemed like he was kind of rattled and he was kind of speeding things up. And that's why we saw a lot of those passes go over the heads of guys. Um, we saw him kind of leave the pocket a little too early. Um, you know, so so on a look at that game, I, I think that there were a lot of missed opportunities. In my Dolphins film study, I wrote about how, I mean, 
yeah, the the Fort Niners pass rush was very, very good, and they rattled to it at, at times. But I think a lot of that was just kind of Tua getting in his own head, and like there were opportunities to be made. Um, you know, there were a lot of plays over the court, over the middle of the field that were accustomed to seeing seeing Tua hit that he just didn't hit. Um, and for as bad as that game was for the offense, it was by far Tua's worst game of the season. Um, with about ten minutes left, nine minutes left. I mean, shoot, six minutes left. The Dolphins were on the 49ers side of the field facing fourth and two, I, I believe, with an opportunity um, to, to make a play. And, you know, originally we thought that Tua had completed that pass to Mike Kosecki along the sideline, but Kyle Shanahan challenged it and the replay showed that he didn't make a play. Um, obviously, the ball uh, was turned over on downs. Um, the 49ers go down to kick a field goal to make it a two-score game. And then Nick Bosa did what he had done all afternoon, made a play. And, uh, you know, that strip sack return for a touchdown really sealed things. Um, but I don't think the sky is falling in Miami. You know, I always think of, you know, the NFL as like it's a week-to-week -week league. You know, you're probably never as good as people make you out to be after a win. And you're probably not as bad as people make you out to be after a loss. Um so it was a game that kind of does make you a little bit concerned. Like if they do play a team um, that has a similar blueprint, a similar personnel, like the Bills down the road, if you play that type of team and they're going to play that team in two weeks, it does kind of concern you there. But for the most part, I think, I think they're going to be fine. Obviously it was a missed opportunity in terms of going, jumping up to the number one seed. Now they go from two to six, they're second in the AFC East behind the Bills. So it's a missed opportunity there, but big picture, I think they're going to be fine. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a great it's a great blueprint the 49ers laid down. All you have to do is have the number one defense with one of the premier pass rushers uh in the league right and maybe the premier pass rusher in the league right now. Yep, yeah, that's that's just pretty much it. And then you can it, when you do that, you can, you know, you can rattle uh to I I I don't think Tua was I, you know, I think he was, yeah, you, you get to a guy a few times. That's what happens. That's what happens when you get to quarterbacks a few times. That's why people say that to every single quarterback, oh, you, you know, we got to hit him more. You know, we got to got to get pressure up, you know, we get pressure on him and we got to hit him. And, you know, especially back before, you know, they, they were throwing, you know, roughing the passer penalties on, you know, every time you, you know, you, you know, breathed on a guy after he threw the ball, they, you know, it was like, that was what you did. Why? Because. Gee, guy gets sacked a few times. Even if he's not like hurt, or you know, it, it's you know, it throws his timing off. And, and in his head, he's thinking, "I got to get rid of this because I want the ball out of my hand because I don't want to have happen what happened on their last drive, which is you know, the ball slapped out of your hand, and then suddenly it's out there, and you're running around chasing it, and you know, they pick it up and they score. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what happens and then you and then you know then the quarterbacks but you know the, his fundamental when he starts rushing himself when any quarterback starts rushing themselves their fundamentals break down yeah when their fundamentals break down what happens the passes don't go exactly where they're supposed to be and Tua we, and Tua is the quarter, type of quarterback where he's not he's not gonna like he's not like Mahomes or Josh Allen where they can run around and kind of be off play like he's that's not his game so yeah. really it's yeah. it's even more important for him to not rush himself or not be rushed, but you know, you know, and and their offense is based on timing. And so if somebody's you know throwing the ball a little tad too soon, somebody's throwing the ball a tad hot, a tad off, you know, tad, you know, a tad late, tad high, not really setting their feet. Well, you know, you get what happened the other day, and uh that's you know, you could say it's a look. You could say it's a blueprint, but honestly, it's funny that this was happening in San Francisco. As old heads remember, yeah, they they people said that for like a decade, about and a half, about the 49ers when you went from Joe Mont through the Joe Montana years and Steve Young years. Oh yeah, you know that's it. Yeah, you got to hit them. You got to throw their timing off. You got to do this, and then you know. But the problem was that precious few teams could actually do that on exactly. a regular basis <laughs> and you know even so it was kind of like oh yeah you know even if you did a good job of it well you know they still got you for enough that you know they're they're you know uh, that you know 
your defense could you know couldn't hold them under your you know your defense couldn't play well enough to to win the game and that's kind of what happened here i mean you there were they scored 17 points to you know on really two huge plays and the rest of the time it was you know they had a rough time and they had you know they had an interception where the running back where there was a wood jeff wilson he slips his to us throwing the ball yeah and if he doesn't slip i don't know i don't know if that play happens you know obviously yeah, that, the, that's the, yeah that that's that's happens and it's funny how the universe works it's that's the kind of thing that happens when things start going against you yeah um you know when things are going your way uh the defensive back or the linebacker drops the ball or you know just it, it doesn't get picked off somehow um but no he he slips that's I don't know if that's to his fault. The one with the one that Tyree killed that was obviously behind way, him, and I was just a bad way pass. off. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's a you know I'm trying to get it out there. You know, there's you know there's a lot happening here. Here I'm you know I've been I've been rushed all day, um, and it, it happens. I don't think there's one thing I don't think you have to worry about with to. Uh, is it? I don't think that you can ever, you're ever going to sit there and say, okay, he got rattled by the situation. Um, you know, if he gets rattled by getting getting hit too many t- times, or or you know, just getting sacked too many times, not even really, not even really pounded, but just getting sacked because you know, you just you don't want to lose that yardage. You don't want you know, and so like I said, you just you start doing things. You get out of your rhythm. It's very simple. And and um, but I don't think that like the situation, this was a big game. I mean, you could just, I mean, I'm watching from here and, you know, on TV, you could feel it. You could feel that coming through the set. It was just one of those games where you felt big game, big regular season game, you know, coming through, even though, you know, it's, it's interconference, it's not going to be, it, it's not going to be counted as a tiebreaker in any way. It's not an AFC game, but this was okay. You know, this might, these guys look like the best in the NFC. These guys might be the best in the AFC. This might be a Super Bowl preview. There was a lot of energy into it. You know, the crowd was into it. You could feel it. I could feel it watching on TV. I could feel it when I was listening on the radio the t- during the game. That you know, so it was a big game. I don't think. To a guy, I agree with you. That he was rattled. I don't think he was rattled by that. That's not the moment. That's a, he wasn't. It wasn't that the moment got to him. Yeah, him. he's 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 lived with that for, you know, he lived with that throughout college. You know, I mean, how many big games? How many games like that did that did Alabama play? And, but, yeah, I mean, when they when they started getting to him, um, yeah, he he got a little rattled and and. There's a lot of focus on Tua, obviously, but you know, uh, you kind of would like, kind of wish that the defense wouldn't would have done a little more against what's essentially a third string quarterback. Yeah. That's their Skylar Thompson. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know they they lost they lost sort of Trey Lance earlier in the season. They lost, and so you know now you lost you Jimmy G, and. So here's this guy coming, you know, off the bench. He's I think he'd only seen mop up time again uh, against Kansas City. You, you'd kind of like to see more from the defense there. That said, you know, when you're coming in as a third string quarterback, it's nice to have Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey, yeah, and a help a reasonably healthy offense because they made. They made plays. I mean, they, they made, plays, they made yeah. some plays for from they they did like it was almost like every play they did everything they could to get everything out of each play that that came to them. I mean, even that uh, that end around that ill could that end around that fooled nobody. That yeah. like the it was like the Dolphins were playing euchre when they came, when he came up. Oh, how you doing, Debo? We've been waiting for you. Let's go tackle him now. And they and he. He squared it out. It's like a negative five yard four. loss instead of, yeah, a, ten instead of a ten yard loss. loss. Yeah, it's just right. like they. It, it, yeah, that was that was the kind of thing they did all day, and so I think they really helped their you know their their third string quarterback out. But you would kind of like to see the 
you know, you know, unless this guy's, you know, Let's come know, on. We're, 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 we're getting into a you know a Brady situation here or Norm Van Brockman or whatever. You know, the backup comes in and you know the you know the starter, the backup nobody expects, and the starter never sees the field again for that franchise. Um, you would like to think that they could have gotten a little more. They could have they could have helped the Dolphins out there with a the turnover, short field, some. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it was definitely. Um, you know, I, I will say I think that they played they played pretty well. Um, I do take into account that those two interceptions kind of placed them on short fields, and on both occasions they they um they they only allowed field goals. So I mean that that's a plus for that defense being put in a disadvantage just at disadvantageous situation. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, when the when the offense turns the ball over with six minutes left, um, everyone knows they're gonna run the ball. You know, every single person in the stadium in the press box watching the game knows that they're gonna try to run the ball and and try to bleed out the clock. And you gotta get a stop there. I mean, you you have to you have to somehow get the ball back into the offense's hands without um without any points added for the 49ers and they weren't able to um and, and I think that in some aspects again they were kind of out coached with you know bringing out that cover zero bring out some of those blitz looks and Kyle Shanahan having you know his rookie uh and Brock Purdy ready to um you know kind of neutralize that so again yeah, I I agree it's, it was kind of it was definitely a, an up and down performance because um in some aspect they were able to get some pressure they were able to get that one interception on fourth down um and they were able to kind of have the offenses back when they turn the ball over but at the end when you really need the defense to make a stop they weren't able to um so yeah that, that was a little, little disappointing there um but overall i think that it was a it was a decent performance i mean it's, it's not dominant i don't i don't know if at this point this is ever going to be a dominant defense i don't think so i think it's probably going to be an average to an above average uh defense um but in that spot, yeah, you need that complimentary football. I mean, I remember talking yeah, to one of the one of the exactly. defensive, yeah, one of the defensive guys said, Hey, I mean, points are gonna be scored. It's it's tough to 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 shut out teams and not I mean, shoot, the 49ers are probably probably the best defense in the NFL. And you know, they had a streak of not allowing a second half score for four straight games. I mean, that that just doesn't happen in 2022. Um, so it's tough to to keep a team out of the end zone and keep points off the board, but you got to be able to make stops, you know, when in high level situations and the Dolphins defense wasn't able to do. I mean, that, that end of the first half drive touchdown drive, uh, that was a huge one that sets the tone that, you know, the score score wise that sets the tone for like the entire second half. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can't, you kind of like to see them, get a stop there also and but look that's you know the Dolphins played a game played on the road against argue what I think is might be the best team in the NFC uh and a team that's pretty well set up to kind of stop what they do and is not and you know is is going to have you know, that good eye discipline against with what the Dolphins do. And, you know, both sides suffered. Yeah, both Dolphins came in with some injury issues. Boy, you know, suffered a significant injury during the game. Uh, you get a late turnover, you know, it's run back. So this the score looks like a, it looks like a you know six sixteen point win. It looks like a bit of a blowout, but but it's, it was a lot closer than maybe it was. Final score it was in reality, you're right? You're you're right there at the end. You know they get um, so they lost. It happens, you know. And um, again, it's a, it was a tough situation. It was we both of us thought they were going to lose the game. We didn't think expect them to lose the game the way they did, but we thought they were going to lose the game. We thought the 49ers were a better team, especially with the Dolphins' injury issues, and that proved to be the case. So, you know, what, you know, no reason for everybody to start, you know, you know, rending garments and, you know, lighting candles and getting the, you know, getting the torches out and, you know, get, you know, getting ready to, you know, yell and scream for, you know, two to be taken out or whatever. Um, it you know, I think there's no reason to jump off the bandwagon. Uh, now, 
And even if they lose this week, I don't think there's any reason to jump off the bandwagon. Like, look, folks, pe- people, teams lose games, <laughs> you know. And I think for the first time this season, the Dolphins was they lost with their starting, with their number one quarterback starting the game and finishing the game. Well, he was taken out at the end, but you know, I, I get the point. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I had had the ankle uh, kind of ag- re-aggravation, so he's taken out. But I get the point, you know. Yeah, uh, the first time that you know to uh, you know, or definitely the first time since the, uh, he returned from the week seven, uh, returned f- uh, from the concussion in week seven. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they're losing with him at the helm. Yeah, they lost. Yeah, yeah, they lost. Yeah, I, I will say, you know, as uh, as you know, you shift into December football. You know, we we spoke to Mike McDaniel about kind of playing meaningful December games, you know, this was the start. This was the first of three consecutive road games. Um, You know, again, there's still a lot of season left. um, But, you know, like I said, there was that missed opportunity going from, you know, potentially two to one in that conference to going from two to six. Um, And now, you know, you have the second leg of of that, of that road trip with the Chargers, um, you know, ahead of the Buffalo Bills game. I mean, you said we're going to talk about something on the other side, but I mean, if you lose this game, it does start to get a little, a lot more dicey in terms of like, like that week 15 game becomes a must win game in order to win the division. I mean, if you go down two games um, to the bills with a split, then, you know, it's, you're kind of just gunning for a wild card spot. And that would be kind of a disappointing drop considering, you know, how well they had played um, into his return. So again, um, they still got two more, two more games um, on this kind of road stretch. And then they got the Packers on Christmas, and then they wrap up with a pair of divisional games. Um, but definitely a missed opportunity there. Uh, but we'll see how they rebound against the Chargers. All right, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back into the side of things, we got to discuss Tua versus Herbert. His Tua silenced all the doubters who said the Dolphins should have picked Herbert uh, a couple years back in the draft. We're going to talk about that as well as give our game predictions for the big Sunday night game. So stay locked with us. What's going on, everybody? Still here on the Dolphins in Depth podcast, talking all things Dolphins with David Neal. And as we move on to Sunday night's highly anticipated game, flexed game. I mean, this is it's the true testament of the Dolphins' appeal this season. This game was flexed uh, to the Sunday night slots. Dolphins, charges, but more importantly, maybe not more importantly, but very importantly, who uh, are... <laughs> Where's Justin Herbert? <laughs> you know, I got it. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's more important than the actual no. game. But uh, you know, obviously, these two quarterbacks aren't going to be facing off directly against each other. But I mean, um, as former top ten picks, to a number five, Justin Herbert, number six, um, all the questioning of that decision. The Dolphins picking two hundred one pick ahead of Herbert who went obviously went to the Chargers. Um, that's been debated to no end over the past couple of years, especially as Justin Herbert uh, burst onto the scene early on in his rookie season, uh, earning offensive rookie of the year honors to a kind of slower in his progression. Obviously we knew that he, uh, you know, he sat the first couple of games on the bench as he was kind of recuperating recovering from um, that devastating hip injury that he sustained back in his final year of college. Um, to his throne uh, into the starting role his rookie year has some ups and downs yanked in and out of the lineup uh, by Brian Flores second year we all know how much of a disaster that was battling injuries um, and struggles um, and uh, internally and outwardly you know with this uh, the whole two coordinator situation and just not having the talent the requisite talent to succeed um, but to us kind of flipped the narratives I mean with this breakout season Justin Herbert having a really strong season as well but to a um, definitely the better season um, and that's reflected in you know this the MVP odds and he's still top five still uh, really high in a lot of um, efficiency numbers and raw stats um, when we compare these two quarterbacks you know almost finished with their third season in the NFL. I mean, uh, Justin Herbert, uh, excuse me, knocked out my, <laughs> knocked out my headphones, but uh, Justin Herbert, getting me excited for this. I'm excited for this, man. Uh, <laughs> you look at Justin Herbert, a 21 and 23 record, which I think um, his biggest critics will point to is, you know, him having um, the supernatural, people say generational talents, but maybe that not, um, 
translating to wins. He's 21 and 23 as a starter, 66% uh, percent completion percentage, um, 5, 000, uh, almost 13,000 yards, um, you know, several thousand yards more than Tua because obviously Tua hasn't played um, nearly as many games. 89 touchdowns, 32 interceptions, 96.3 passer rating. Tua, on the other hand, is 21 and 10 as a starter. I mean, that's been the thing for Tua since he entered the league. Regardless of how it looks, left-handed, maybe not putting up the biggest numbers, he's been a winner in the league. And I know people like to they like to say wins and losses is not, you know, that's not a QB stat. I agree, but to some extent it is because the quarterback plays a big role in that. I know, but I know you don't want to hear that, but I'm just saying. But two with 21 and 10 as a starter, 66.8% completion percentage. So they're, I mean, they're essentially uh, – right on the same when it comes to raw completion percentage um as i said to uh, not as many raw passing um yards 7300 48 touchdowns to 20 interceptions for 96.2 pass rate so these guys are i mean for the body of their three years they're kind of neck and neck and obviously if you go per game over those three years um herbert has the the leg up on you know passing uh, yards and touchdowns again but he's attempted a lot more yards um than, than, than uh he's attempted a lot more passes than you so, so two has been a lot more efficient um over his first couple of years and i think that that's really reflected in this breakout season where again the chargers are six and six uh Justin Herbert, 66% completion percentage, uh, 3,300 yards, 20 touchdowns, seven interceptions um, for a 92 uh, passer rating. But Tua, on the other hand, um, eight and two record as a starter, we'll, we'll, we'll say obviously he's knocked out of some games, but eight and two record as a starter, 68% completion percentage, almost uh, 2,900 yards, 21 touchdowns to just five interceptions for a 112 pass rating. That leads the NFL. So breakout year for Tua. He's shining. At right now, the pick looks like a hit. I mean, if Tua can sustain, maybe not leading the league in passer rating and every single efficiency number out there, but if Tua can remain in that kind of top five, top ten realm, um, the realm that a lot of people kind of anointed and put Justin Herbert in after his first year or two, um, I don't know how you can say this was a uh, you know a bad pick or they should have done Herbert over to and I will say this is a very interesting kind of rivalry to me because I felt like they've only met once um obviously you know as, as rookies they only met one time as rookies and the Dolphins win that game um so there's not really like a rivalry on the field there but the rivalry has definitely taken place you know on social media with the the, the two factions you know whether it's you know the, the, two, the two stands and the Herbert stands I mean that, that's really where the real rivalry is taking place um, I'm not going to get into that too much. Um, but again, I mean, I didn't, you know, years ago, I didn't know too much. I mean, I, I, I don't watch a ton of college ball. You know, I watched a load of Alabama. So I saw Tua. Um, you know, at first, like I said before, you could definitely say that this is this was a miss. This was maybe could have been like a defining miss for the Dolphins with the way that both those players' careers have started. Um, and and they're, it's interesting because they they're so different. I mean, they couldn't be like farther apart where Justin Herbert's the rocket arm, it's the ability to push the ball downfield, downfield, downfield. And then that, that's like his, that's his, you know, gift. That's his superpower. But for Tua, it's the accuracy, it's the timing, it's the eye manipulation, it's stuff like that. It's his ability to be so pinpoint um, with his passing and putting right, put it right where his receivers need it. Um, so again, it's like, if you're, if you're taking them in a vacuum, and you're, if you're kind of putting them in a vacuum and you say, who would you take? I mean, sure, like, yeah, you're probably going to lean Herbert um, because he has the, the the big arm. But, you know, as we've said, you know, we've said this weeks and months ago, like before the season even started, you know, like the game isn't played 40 yards downfield. Um, would I take Herbert? Probably. I'd probably give him the edge just because when you do have that arm, you do, you can, you do, you can kind of stress defenses a little differently. Um but I mean, if anything, this this stretch has shown, this stretch of the season has shown that Tua has a superpower and he has a gift in itself. And you can be very, very successful with that gift in its own right. I mean, not every quarterback, not every great quarterback in the NFL has had a rock and arm has been able to launch a 60 yards downfield. Um, so I'm really excited for this matchup. I I'm just glad that like we're at the point where like most of these guys are succeeding. And it's like, can we can we kind of like be happy that like 
both of these guys succeed. I mean, they're, I mean, this, the 2020 draft, you know, the QB draft class is looking like a great one with Herbert and Tua and um, what's his, I'm blanking right now. I'm blanking right now. Jalen Hurts. Um, I mean, it's looking great. Obviously, Jordan Love, you, you all put him to the side. But <laughs> I mean, it's looking like a great class. And, you know, I hope that on Sunday night, it's not going to happen, but I'm hoping on Sunday night, instead of kind of saying like, this guy can't do that and this guy can and vice versa, we're really appreciative of like their various gifts because we're going to see two very, very different players who have very, very special gifts. I, it's... <sighs> It's sort of, I, I don't, I, one of the things I don't like about uh, too often in sports, we, we act, we act like it's either or, and we, act, and we act, we act like, well, wait a minute, why can't I just like both guys? And why can't we appreciate, you know, this guy or this woman for what, you know, this athlete does. And if there's a kind of an opposite number or a rivalry or a created rivalry, uh, mm -hmm. manufactured one, why can't we just depreciate the opposite one for what they do? And um, I mean, it's a fun, dis I, like, I think it's a fun discussion to have. I don't think it's like worth getting all heated about and, you know, you know, oh, you do me so and, and that's another thing I don't like about modern discussions of this is that if you don't, it's if you're not all in on one side and you're saying that person sucks, and it's like, no, no. Um, if you asked asked me, like, you know, which one I'd rather have, looking at, you know, from what I've seen from both of them, my first question would be, how many games has Justin Herbert played? Over the course of his career, he's been played in 44 games, 21 and 23 as a starter, which again... Uh, how how many games has Tua played in? He's played 33, so... And part of that, obviously, obviously the first half of the year, and you could say that was to injury as well, but, you know, they were kind of easing him in his first year. So right. not, a, not as many games played. First ability is availability. That's fair, and, that's true. Um, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, if... If there's a tiebreaker there, for then, you know, I, I think I think you know a good coach uh, looks at what he has and a, you know molds what he does what he does to his players' abilities. And I don't know if I don't think Brian Flores did that. I think Mike McDaniel definitely has done that, and. I think, you know, if I think if you gave Mike McDaniel Justin Herbert, I think he would do that too. I think he would say, okay, you know, this is, um, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, we're not going to run the same offense, at least the same passing offense, uh, the same way. You just, you don't do, you know, you wouldn't. I mean, the the entire West Coast offense is, it's which is that it should be called the Midwest offense because it was. It was literally, it was come up with, Bill Walsh came up with it because he had a guy like Justin Herbert and that guy got his shoulder torn up and, you know, career done, basically career done. And he was left with a guy who's, whose arm makes, who arm, arm makes Tua look like Justin Herbert. And he's like, okay, how do I deal with this? Um, So, you know, I, I think, uh, if the Chargers, if you had flip flopped the two, I, I think the Chargers, if they were smart, would have said, "Okay, this is what this he guy does." does well. Well. Let's tailor and that. Let's you know, let's tailor our offense to that. And um, and if and maybe they would have wouldn't have drafted, or maybe they wouldn't have, and just said, "Okay, look, we can't coach that kind of offense." Well, this guy's not. This guy's going to be a really good quarterback in the league. He's not going to be a good quarterback with us. And they would have drafted somebody else. Uh, it, it's, I guess, it's 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 a manufact definitely manufactured rivalry. And unless they both finish, unless the teams finish, you know, both finish second in their divisions or both win their divisions, um, 
or both finished third in their divisions, you know, each year, like the Colts and Patriots did for several years when, you know, when Manny and Brady were there, they both seemed to have the, you know, do the same thing in the same year, usually winning their division. So you would, the schedule formula would always have you playing each other. They're not going to meet every year. And, uh, uh, you know, does it make this meeting more interesting? I don't know. I, I, I just, I think it's really interesting because each one needs this, each team needs this game and yeah. in the playoff race. And it's a, it's a game you need just on raw record. It's a game you need for tiebreakers. It's so that's where it's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be, you know, Sunday night football and, you know, all the eyes are going to be on you. Know, it's going to be the big deal game. And, uh, you know, at the, at the little lovely, you know, sort of all brand new stadium, <laughs> you know, yeah. in, in LA and um, yeah. So that, that, I think that's, there's going to be some, some buzz there. And you know, yeah, though each one will want to outplay the other, but it's a simple fact, as we know, they they're not playing each other. Yeah, not so, uh, And uh, so I think there's something about the ch- <laughs> something about the Chargers that it, it, for for years and decades they it. They always seem to have the pieces, and it never comes together. Never seem to fit together just right. Whether it's injuries or it's just them coming yeah. up short in the playoffs. Somebody, just... somebody gets hurt. You know, uh, you know, Drayton Florence gets. You know, Troy Brown strips down the interception that seals the, the playoff game, or you know, you show up for the playoff game and you, you know, Philip Rivers and Ladainian Tomlinson are hurt, and it's just. It always seems that way. They you show up for the playoff game and it's you know fifty nine below zero wind chill. It, you know this always seems to be them, and it, this kind of feels like this year's Chargers team is like that. They're just yeah, they're they're see, they're a really good team, and you're going, but you look each week and there they are playing a game that seems much closer than it should be, losing the game to that they shouldn't losing to a team that they shouldn't and uh, you know personally I, 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 i'm gonna pick the dolphins just because they the the, the chargers this this just seems like exactly the kind of game that the chargers you know will um will hang close in they're gonna you know it's gonna be tough it's gonna be or you're gonna be back and forth and then at some point you know that last five minutes you know everybody watching that game everybody in the stadium is going to be sitting there going okay how's this gonna cut how's this gonna happen because you know it's gonna happen yeah. <laughs> you know how's it gonna, how are they gonna how are they gonna blow this and how, or how are the dolphins gonna win this because and, and i you know uh yeah i just I, they they just seem to be this almost you know kind of star cross team that can't quite get everything right and it feels like they're that way again this year um and justin herbert's a hell of a quarterback you know like i said if i if you had to the tiebreaker to me is availability but so what you know if you if you told me two is my quarterback okay fine um he's two is in a system that plays to his abilities yeah, he didn't have a great game last week. Okay, that happens. And so now let's see what happens this week. I mean, if it happens a few weeks in a row, you got a problem. But, you know, let's see what happens this week. Um, and I think they're going to be up for, up for this game. And, you know, I like the mat, like the matchups. Uh, so, yeah, I... I think the Dolphins going to come out, come out of this one. I think Herbert's going to make his plays. Uh, San Diego's going to make their plays. They've got a really talented offense, and yeah, 
I don't know, 31, 24, I think, or something like that. But it, you just, I don't know. They, there's, there might be, a, it might like 38, 24, because you might get that, like, you know, that Tracy Porter, like, you know, they're driving for the tying score, pick it off, run back, you know, pick six, run back, something like yeah. that. But yeah. Yeah. It feels like I, that. Yeah. I mean, this is, I, I'm definitely going to say this is a must win game. You know, the, the, the four Niners game would have been nice to have. Um, but after you lose that and drop down one game behind the Bills, I mean, if the, if your first goal every seed is, is to win the division, um, I think this is a game that you have to win in order to suff, set yourself up to play the Bills in week 15. Again, it's going to be another primetime game. Um, sweep them and then return to the number one spot in the AFC. So this is a must-win game. Um, I like the matchup as well. Um, the Chargers defense is just not good. Um, there's just no way to put it. I mean, they're allowing 5.4 yards per carry. Um, it could be a, I mean, the, the Dolphins run game could get going again. Um, I, I don't think that they have Khalil Mack, but I don't think that, um, I just don't think that they're going to be able to put it together on all levels of the, of the defense to do what the 49ers did. Um, and then on defense. Yeah. I mean, I think that if, if guys are healthy, I don't know if I know Keenan, Keenan Allen is there, but you know, for all we know, he might aggravate that hamstring injury and be out the game. I don't know what's going on with the other receiver, Mike Williams, if all those guys play, yeah, I mean they could they could give the Dolphins uh, um, defense uh, some fits, but I do think that they're going to be able to you know kind of rattle Justin Herbert, get to him a little bit. I'm going to say twenty to three to twenty, which is is a kind of a low scoring game, um, but I do kind of expect there to it, it to be a back and forth game because I think that both of these offenses, um, if healthy, um, you know, on, on for the Chargers, I think both of them can put up a lot of points. Um, but I think that the Dolphins wins game. I'm going to pick a a, a close game because I just don't like picking blowouts. Um, but I'm not going to lie. I would, I would not be surprised if the Dolphins come out, they're on their P's and Q's and they, they blow out the Chargers. And I, I mean, I'll say blow out. You know, I was going to say maybe 14 points, maybe 17. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, because I think that, I think that they're going to be focused. They're going to rebound from that loss there. I don't think two is going to just make those just be off. I mean, he was just off against the 49ers. I, I don't see that happening again. Um, and I think that especially against a team like the Chargers, that just I just don't think they're going to allow, allow a lot of resistance on on defense. If if the Dolphins can get, you know, a three and out or a turnover or a short field and then like Dolphins kind of double them up, like if they get up 17 to to seven or 14 to seven, I think I, I, I don't know. You know, if they get rolling, I don't think that they can they're going to be able to be stopped. Um, so I'll say 23 to 20. I'll, I'll kind of like be conservative, but I'll also kind of hedge my bet and say, um, you know, I'm expecting, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a high scoring game that the Dolphins kind of dominate in the second half. Well, that's that's another thing, that I'll, by the way, that also we don't talk about, they didn't talk about very much that didn't work well against the 49ers was the, the running game. It was, you know, running game gave you bupkis. And yeah, I mean, they didn't so, even try. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it was, you can't say it was because of game flow because, I mean, that game was still, I mean, it wasn't. An, I mean, it was a one-score game for yeah. for for a majority of it. So uh, yeah. I think that so, there are even, opportunities. Even, even if it's a two-score ga- game, I, I never understand NFL coaches. Pay, NFL coaches, they 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 they, they, they get ooh, in panic, but more than more than anybody, like you know, they get two scores down. Oh my goodness, we gotta start throwing the ball. Well, no, you don't. You get time on the clock. <laughs> you know, you still have time to run the ball. You know, until. If you're down, unless you're down, until you're down two scores in the fourth quarter, you have time to run the ball. You have time to do whatever the heck you want. You know, it's not, you know, it's still going to come down to you got to stop the other guy, guy when they have the ball. Um, but yeah, it, the, the Dolphins could have run the ball at any point during that game, or they could have tried to run the ball at any point during that game. The score did not dictate anything until the very end. Yeah. Um, and they weren't able, they weren't able to, they, uh, they didn't get it going. And that is also, you know, that was something that was coming along and boy, you know, you know, any quarterback can tell you your life gets a whole lot easier. Your receivers come open there more. It's, you know, suddenly it's a day at the beach when the running game's going and, you know, you can work, you really can they really have to respect your play action fakes and you know here and your third downs are a lot shorter you know you're you know everything's a lot nicer uh when you know you're at second and four second and third you know second and three third and one um so yeah you know this is 
uh, you know, I can see the Dolphins just being back on track. And yeah, the Dol- the Chargers have the weapons to give the Dolphins a problem problems, but yeah, there's a reason their record is where it is, even though even though their roster says it should be better. Yeah, and so I'm going to take the team that whose record is right where about where their roster says it should be. And, you know, and funny enough, that's also the team with the better record. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Chargers were definitely, I mean, I don't want to say they're one of them, maybe like the, the biggest disappointments, because I think there's definitely a lot of teams out there, like the Broncos and whatnot, and the, you know, even the Raiders, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who have been much more bigger disappointments. But I mean, they, this was, right. you know, this is one of the teams that was kind of going all in, you know, with trading for Khalil Mack, um, you know, lining come up with right. Joey Bosa. And, um, you know, this was definitely a, a team that was kind of viewed as an up and coming squad in the AFC. So for them to be six and six, it's definitely a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, and again, I mean, their, their record, you know, kind of, you are what your record are, it says. I mean, right now they're a talented team, but they're a team that hasn't, that, that that's mainly been average over the course of the year. Um, so, I mean, I think this definitely is a uh, maybe get get right game for the Dolphins ahead of that big week 15 game. And, and we'll see if they can get back on track. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of the Dolphins in Depth podcast. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Reminder as always to subscribe to the Miami Hero YouTube page like share comment as well as uh, subscribe to the miami herald um as i said i'm out here in california sunny california where the dolphins are staying out on the west coast to prepare for the chargers Um, i'm gonna have a ton of coverage for you guys throughout the week um updates on tua Toron Armstead, who could potentially make his return um, uh, Sunday for that game from that pick injury, as well as a lot more news. Um, so definitely stay locked um, to the Miami Herald uh, website, newspaper, however you get your Miami Herald news. Um, we'll be back next week to recap another week of Dolphins football. But until then, you guys take care. See you.